Here's a nut and fancy look at the functional elegance of Imkusta. Okay, real name, Imkusta. But if I ever meet you in person and you're cool enough to have this as your EDC knife when I do a blade check on you, if you say Imkusta with enthusiasm, double high five for me. Maybe a special gift for being so cool as to have chosen such a cool blade for your EDC. Hey dudes, nothing fancy of course. It's 2012, knife show in good health here in TMP in 2012. I love this blade. Love the looks of the blade. I like the quality levels, the steel choice. The value is high for what you're getting. It hails from Seki City, Japan. Like a lot of other blades I've reviewed over the years here in front of the TMP camera. This city knows how to put together some pretty awesome blades. Great fit and finish, attention to detail, usually some awesome features, depends on the blade, the design of the blade. Usually excellent quality control, I'll talk about that as the review progresses, Seki City. We've seen it in Spyderco, haven't we? For years, there's a Cali 3, love that knife. It's Japan, I don't know if that's Seki City, probably is. I just reviewed this. C-150 Junior, that's put together in the same city, and it has all those same attributes. I said as much in my review of this knife. On the table is Imkusta, Imkusta, <laughs> Tactility in Coco Bolo. I have two versions to show you. They're both awesome. Here comes a black sculpted micarta version. Okay, and that is catalog number MC... 0121. I think that's the box to it right there. Purchased by the Nutton Fancy Project. These knives are sick. I'll just say it. They're sick. They're dripping in all kinds of second kind of cool. That is the attraction perhaps to the oriental design influence. We may or may not see that in other brands. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. I'm not a blind follower to such a design principle. I'm talking oriental style knives, but when they come together like they do in the tactility, I am a huge fan. They kind of uh, harken back to that old style of knife craftsmanship. I don't know tons about the, the knife maker Imkusta. They go by Machine Custom. Imkusta is short for that, I guess. They're hand assembled. They use modern manufacturing methods to put the knives together to include lasers. That's pretty cool. And they're just really high quality blades. Jumping into POU. And we've kind of already started it. Collectibles. These are knives that you just love to put into your collection. Once in a while you break them out, you fondle them, you smile. You have a great time when we fondle our blades. I know, it's sick. I still do it. After all these years, I love handling a really nice knife. It brings me joy. Collectible, absolutely. I generally concentrate um, on the collectible POU in terms of not necessarily increasing value. I don't know if these will or not. If the, the manufacturer just suddenly went out of business, I think they would. And I've seen lots of production knives that have gone way up in value when their production ceased. A good example of that would be the SOG government agent. Huh. So it can happen. But I think collectible in the sense that it gives you enjoyment. That's the first POU. I think another one, and it's a distinct one, is a gift. How would you like to get this from somebody? The Mkusta Tactility. What a wicked cool gift that would be. Uh, not exactly cheap. It would have to be someone special, but we all have people like that in our lives, right? And it will be a gift to, to be treasured the rest of their lives. Even if they're not a knife person, look at how gorgeous this blade is. Blade is. We'll talk about the steel here in just a second. Gift, absolutely. Everyday carry knife, would you use it? I did. How's that? In preparation for this tabletop review, I was carrying... This one, and I'll tell you, there's actually, if you guys are Imkusta Tactility owners already, you may notice something different about the, the blade and handle combinations. I'll discuss that. I carried uh, this one for two weeks just to get some data on it, see how it does. Kind of an expensive carry knife, 
kind of. It's not really overly expensive for what you're getting. And it worked great. Carries well uh, deep in the pocket. Great blade steel. All the other details I'll get to in a second. I think it's a great EDC choice. Is it too long in the blade for you? Nothing fancy. Uh, not really. I do like the smaller blades. What do I have clipped in my pocket? And this isn't made up. I just have my standard sock flash one. That was a horrible deployment. Let me try that again. Here we go. Oh, that's better. I flitzed that one years ago. See that? Oh, you can see my ugly face in the mirror. So this is a perfect EDC blade for me. Has been for years. Still doable. Collectible. Talked about that. Tactical? Um, not really. Not for me. It's kind of a smaller blade. It has a medium traction on it. It's not outstanding. We'll talk a little bit about that. And in that philosophy of use, I think the blade's a little bit small. I like big blades for that. That's just me, though. That's philosophies as I see it. Size and weight. 3.6 ounces for that wood version on my scale, and then a little bit heavier at 3.8 ounces for the sculpted micarta version right here. Below my generally desired 4 ounce, uh, you know, not limitation, but desire for all kinds of folding knives, specifically tactical actually. EDC knives, I like them to be actually much lighter. Around two ounces excites me. Uh, so the weight is doable, it's it's good in most philosophies of use. Most of y'all won't care. In carrying around, actually I didn't care. The steel, speaking of outstanding, is VG10. Which shouldn't be surprising coming out of Seki City, Japan. That's what we see in lots of Spydercos. I've raved about it forever. Great rust resistance, really fine edge capability, easy to sharpen. Great steel choice. And you're going to have actually other choices to make here with the tactility. Do you want this wicked cool looking Damascus? This is actually, they say, 33 layer nickel Damascus with a VG10 core. It's mostly for looks, right? We don't need Damascus anymore for performance, which is why it was originally used and created. VG10 solid does, does just fine. I engraved this one. Check out how hard the steel was. It's pretty hard, even up on top there. I love that steel. I didn't really test the rust resistance of this particular Damascus steel. But being that it's nickel Damascus, it's probably pretty good. This is a solid VG10 blade. Speaking of which, look at how sharp that tip is. Wicked. Actually, it's sharp and yet it's not like needle point. In other words, it'll snap off on you. Where did that Cali 3 go? That's kind of a needle point tip right there. See what I'm saying? A little bit delicate, very capable in our daily tasks. This one strikes a nice blend. I did use the blade to dig out some stuff leave it at that and it functioned perfectly so I'd say high strength for what it is it's a modified drop point elegant unsharpened swedge running down the top not full flat ground I don't need that all the time in this blade it works the grind pattern does I'm talking and it has some flats right here which I find more and more very helpful when we resharpen the blade especially if we're using the Edge Apex Pro sharpener those flats will let you get a consistent angle as you're running your stones. That's a great looking blade shape. I said functional elegance, that's what it is. You have some belly in there, a great penetrator if you need it to be. The relief edge, pretty awesome. How's this, the sharpness out of box? Let's check it out. I rarely do this, I'll do it here. Oh, dude. That's awesome. Uh, it's phenomenal. We'll leave it at that. It's as good as it can be from the tactility. VG10 is such an awesome steel. Great choice from the Mkusta tactility. Uh, nothing I can really say bad about the blade, actually. Laser cut M logo right here. I like that. Uh, and you kind of have a rising sun thumb hole deployment there. On the Damascus version, it has a thumb stud. I'll go ahead and talk about that now. I prefer the thumb stud as far as deployment goes. 
because this one is just slightly, ever so slightly occluded by the handle. Um, not a huge deal, but there is an interference there, to be honest. The thumb stud is my favorite. Speaking of which, the speed. Okay, and this is probably a good point to put this in. If you have an Imkusta tactility already, you might know that these two blades were swapped. What? Yeah, actually, this blade came in the Cocobolo handle, and the Damascus blade came in the sculpted Micarta handle. I swapped them out for a couple reasons. One, I think it makes more sense to have this more, I don't know, beautiful blade in the wood handle and this more functional solid VG10 blade in the micarta handle. I took the knives apart also to look at them, that's another reason, and to see how the washer system is put together. Here comes some pictures. Teflon washers and it's extremely simple in construction. I'm talking the pivot point on the Imkusta tactility. It's almost too simple. I mean when I took it apart, and by the way really tight fit on the pivot, I see that from all quality manufacturers by the way. That's not exclusive to Incusta or Spyderco or anybody else. Real tight fit, but it's really simple. I didn't see any phosphor bronze bushings in there. It's just a simple kind of star-shaped Teflon or nylon washer. And I put them together. And by the way, if you decide to do that, be real careful because as you're reinserting that pivot point back in, if you don't have it completely lined up and you push hard on that, you will crush that Teflon washer and good luck getting another one. Back to the pivot point though. Amazingly smooth for how simple it is. Amazingly. Again, you can see the occlusion here in the handle of the deployment hole. So we come up here, can you do it? Oh, totally. Not a huge deal. Very smooth, very fast is my point. From such a simple system. And here's another thing that really surprised me on taking apart and reassembling these two knives is that you can crank down that pivot screw all the way. From what I've seen, it doesn't change the centering and it doesn't change the stiffness of the pivot point, which is pretty much on most other folding knives that we see. And it is not a Torx, it's a standard Allen head, as you can see here. Now putting the scales on are mini Torx, right there. That's a huge plus, by the way, that I can crank it down that it's not super sensitive to tension. Lots of other knives I've seen over the years that are that way. You've got to just barely crank it, whether you're trying to work on your centering or deployment speed. Both of these are fully cranked down, and I still have excellent speed coming out of them. The lockup, no wiggle at all, side to side, up and down, excellent in the Imkusta tactility. Oh wait, the Imkusta tactility. Really good job. Out of such a simple pivot system, it is honestly surprising to me and I like how I've done the swap. To me this is a knife that I would EDC. I guess I could do the Damascus too. You go, well do the Damascus man, whatever. Yeah, I think, and this is just my own weirdness, is I, I've had Damascus blades rust on me so readily. What comes to mind? Uh, the old Kershaw Barrage, they renamed it to the Salvo from Alabama Damascus Steel. That rusts readily. Again, I think this is more resistant, so there you go. The thumb stud, when we talk about speed on this version, and I really wish they put a thumb stud on a solid VG10 blade. They don't have that from what I've seen. You have to go with the deployment hole. I'm gonna call it the rising sun deployment hole, or you go with this, this thumb stud. No Wizard of Oz issues going on there. Fully ambidextrous, and you can access this much easier, resulting perhaps even better speed. Great job. Strength of the liner lock. Let's see how it engages at the back of the blade. Some room for wear. Kind of thin, but like we've discussed here in TMP for years, those are some very strong liners. For most uses, uses realistic uses, I'm talking everyday carry utility tasks. Maybe some food prep. I think it'll be plenty strong enough. Locks up tight, disengages e easily. Lock up and strength. From what I've seen and for the POUs designated, excellent. That takes us to handle construction. There's so many things I love about the tactility, seriously. One is the pillar construction. I love open pillar construction, always have. Heck, I said as much with, where is it? Oh yeah, the Junior, just reviewed that, same thing. Results in a lighter weight knife, a simpler knife that we can clean out readily with compressed air or whatever. 
One thing I'm going to ding the tactility on is that there is no attempt at all to mill out the liners. That's a miss. I wish they would. M. Kusta, if you ever watch this review, I know you won't. Mill those suckers out, man. Again, let's bring in Junior, just like they did there. So, obviously, in Seki City, they know how to mill out liners. Because <laughs> this was built there. I'm kidding. It's all manufacturer specification. If they did that, you could probably get this knife down to 3.2 ounces. If it was aggressively milled out, the tactility. I don't know. Other than that, no misses at all. Here's your stop pin right there on the tactility. Nice and big. Two pillars in the back. No lanyard hole if that's what you're looking for. For kind of an elegant tactical folder, which this is, I think that's the purpose, kind of along those lines, you're probably not going to find a lanyard hole. How about handle materials? You're going to have to make some choices there too. They have another one, not on the table, made out of Corian. And that one has kind of some multicolor specs in it. You might like that. I think some guys are remarking how uh, uh, tractionable that is. I haven't used it. I don't know much about Corian. Anytime I hear the word Corian, I'm thinking of countertop. So, so I'd probably go with this one, the black sculpted micarta. Let me show you in detail how cool that handle material is. And I love the sculpting on it. Three-dimensional sculpting. Just fabulous. Great job. The Coco Bolo is not too far behind. I want to show you a few competitive options, too, when we talk about wood handles. This is one I EDC'd. I kind of wish I had, and I put a couple dings in it over the weeks. That's a good looking wood. They also have, I think it's called Quincy Burl. That's out there. These are handsome, handsome knives. Ergonomics. Let me see. They got jimping in the liner and it actually is moderate. It's not horrible. Nothing topside. But again, probably the ideal philosophy of use for this is a collectible or gift item. So that's almost sec secondary, isn't it? Overall, the ergonomics are, I wouldn't say outstanding, I would say good to excellent. In other words, how it feels in hand, the balance, and that's my mileage. There are some sharp corners here on the handle scales. Not sharp, they're just not super radius. Remember that oriental design influence that I talked about? It's evident when you look at the outstanding clip on the Imkusta tactility. There's so many things I like about this clip. One. Can you see it? Look how wide it is for accommodating thicker clothing. So if you have 511 uh, tactical pants or true spec 24 sevens, this will go over that reinforced pocket area, no problems. Whereas some other clips that I've used in the past, not so much. I like the, the looks on it too. It looks like it has some file work on it. Again, that oriental design influence is what I was going to say polished clip. It's just good looking. It contrasts against the handle material perfectly and look how deep it carries. Attached by two screws right there. I would say it's of good strength, not perhaps outstanding hard use strength. If you tweaked it, you could probably bend the clip. But I would say two screws is better than one, right? So pretty good strength right there. I love the clip on the tactilities. By the way, Imkusta puts together a lot of other knives, which are equally handsome and special. Most, from what I've seen from my research, do not have clips on them. Would you use those? Um, it just depends. I mean, if it, is it a gift item? Are you ever intending to carry it? Generally, I don't carry an EDC knife without a clip. I say generally because there's some case knives that I do. I'll put them in a pouch and you can do that as well. They're equally beautiful, same quality levels, just keep that in mind. Some don't have clip. They have actually gorgeous um, sewn pouches made of silk or whatever. They're really cool, so there you go. Durability, cruising through this review, maybe not. I would say excellent. Adequately strong tip, I think, from taking it apart, taking a look at it, it's going to serve you well through the years. Is it a hard-use tactical folder? Um, I would say probably not. Lots of other options I've shown you through the years. Go into my playlist. You'll see that. Best hard use knives. Value and competitive options. Let's use the wood one on the table. 
Um, I'm going to roll in some ones that may or may not still be available. Probably not. Here comes a Lone Wolf Longhorn. I'm rolling this in because this has Abano wood scales. It's kind of a nice contrast. This is now marketed by, with different wood by the way, Benchmade. <clears throat> excuse me. Benchmade 4003. That's 4003. It's called the Trask. And it is a sick blade. S30V steel in this version. And it's a lot heavier though, 4.8 ounces. Am I getting that weight right? I think I have 4.4 ounces on that one. Tip down, only carry. I love how this is tip up. Forgot to mention that. That's a competitive option. You would again go to the Swale, which is a smaller knife from Benchmade currently, or the Trask. Here comes another Lone Wolf. I was talking about a tactical philosophy of use and I'm showing you this for two reasons. One, it's cool. And two, this is a size that I would carry, and this also has Cocobolo scales. Executed differently. What a great knife that is. Uh, <clears throat> was. Should have bought it when I reviewed it. 2008, or 9, whenever it was. 4.2 ounces, 7 uh, S30V steel CPM variety. At the time, only $138. This is going to be about $125. Look in the upper right. That's where you should go buy it to save money. In fact... I worked a very special deal for you guys to knock the price down as low as possible. Use the link in the sidebar. Cut and paste it if it's not hot and then that will take you right to that page. Here comes a Buck Vantage Pro. This is also an S30V steel and it was around $78 when TMP purchased it. 4.8 ounces so it's heavier. This is model number 3218. And it also has kind of a wood scale. That's why I'm showing it to you. And it also has kind of a same type of, at least functionally, clip. Is it as cool as the tactility? I don't know. You know, it depends. Here's another one. I'm going to end with that one. I still love this knife, by the way. This is CRKT, the McGinnis Suma. Isn't that a good looking blade? And I'm ending with this because to me, it has the overall feel of the tactility. That is a flowing design elegance. They're gorgeous to look at. You get a lot for your money. This one is in actually a an inferior steel to VG10 in my opinion. That is the 8CR14 MOV if I remember right, 3.8 ounces. So pretty much the same exact weight, tip down carry only, blue anodized. Great looking blade. Still love the McGinnis Suma. Tactility though, at 125, is it worth it? Absolutely. Absolutely worth it. It is awesome. Huge quality levels. Cool features. It's not just all about looks in the tactility, tactility line. In fact, there's a lot more going on as you can see. Has a an almost perfect clip, an almost perfect blade shape, razor sharp, outstanding steel choice. The lockup is extremely solid. It looks to be very durable and you can get your choice of handle materials, and, and blade styles. I'm talking Damascus or solid VG10. It's a huge accomplishment. I love the knife. Nothing fancy.